Good morning, everybody. It's time for coffee and questions. And so today's topic, we're going to talk about what do I use to clean metal or steel, you know, prior to welding or after before painting. It's a question I get asked a lot because there's so many products out there that people use. And somebody goes, well, how do you de-rust it? Well, the easy answer about de-rusting is you can use vinegar and water. It's about a 50-50 mixture. Or you can buy one of these hundreds of products out there and you can use that too. But that's, you know, that's dealing with rust. So let me put up some pictures. I'll show you some other things that you can use for cleaning steel, you know, prior to welding and hopefully it helps you. All right, here we go. No long intros. Okay, I'll talk about each one of these kind of, uh, and I'm going to eliminate them off of the screen and I'll make the others bigger as I get down to what I use. But let's start on the upper left and we talk about this gum spirits turpentine. Um, I don't use it that much, but what can you use it for? You can use it for thinning oil-based paints, stains, varnishes, like it says. Yes, it works. What's nice about it, in a way, anytime you, you thin down that paint or you add one of these additives that we're going to talk about to it, and you're brushing, it gives you more, it gives you more time, like when you're brushing, to do away with all those brush marks and stuff. So, I mean, there is a use for it. I don't particularly use this. I think there are better products out there, so... We'll move next over to the xylene, and along with that's that tooling or xylene. I don't use it, but again, people use this to thin adhesives or, you know, to thin different things that they're spraying or painting. They say that it works really well, but it's also, uh, you know, it's very toxic, so make sure you use it in a well-ventilated area, however you're using it. Or if you want to drop a comment down below, if you have another way that you're using it other than what, you know, I'm describing... That's fine. I'm sure that we'd all be interested. Now, the other thing that you can use it for is let's say you got stickers or something like on a vehicle or on anything and you want to remove it. Well, a couple of the readers said, hey, it works really good for removing like, you know, stickers and the adhesive on the stickers. So I guess for removing adhesive, it's a pretty good thing. Now, the next one over is naphtha. I've used naphtha before. Now, this is a really fast drying thinner. So you can add it into things like it says on the can for spraying, oil-based paints, enamel, stuff like that. Or you can use it for cleanup, but for me, it evaporates way too fast. I mean, I've used it before when I mix my own stains. You can go down to like Michael's and you can buy like oil-based concentrated colors. And I've used naphtha before to make up stains. The problem that I have is it's so rapid drying, you have to be fast when you work with it. So... Yes, I've used it. I have a small can of it around, but I'm not using it that much. Okay, the next one over is methyl ethyl ketone, or they just call it MEK. You can get this in a lot of different places. This can be some wicked stuff. I mean, it works really well, but you better use it in a real ventilated area. I mean, you don't want to breathe this stuff. It'll make you sicker than hell. Um, it's fast drying. It's not as fast as acetone. But it's fast drying, and you can use it for thinning coatings. You can use it, um, I have a friend that he puts a little bit when he's playing around with epoxies and adhesives. Yeah, you can do that. It also is really good for cleanup. I mean, it's a good, great cleaner. I mean, nothing to discredit it. Somebody says, well, how do you use it? Well, you use about four ounces, I mean, to a gallon. You know, I mean, if you're mixing it into something that you're spraying or doing, that's just like a standard, and then you can kind of tweak it from there. All of these products, most of them are highly flammable, so you got to be careful with them. You start using this stuff and you start feeling dizzy or a little nauseated or something, uh, you know, you either better get a vapor mask or get in a very well-ventilated area. I mean, this is, it's some nasty stuff, but it does work really well. I have a small can of it around. I don't use it that much. I'm sure there are other people that will drop a comment saying how much they use it, or maybe they use it for different things. So I'm going to remove these pictures now because they're the ones that we quickly talked about and I'm not using them that much, but these are what they're primarily, primarily used for. And let's talk about some other ones that I do use and I use them for a lot of different things. Okay, let's talk about the second one in on the right and I'm going to pull these down as we go. Boiled linseed oil, what would I use that for? Well, I use it on a lot of wood that um, I want to put a finish on. It makes the grain kind of pop. Um, it's really good, I mean, I think on wood, um, it gives back some of its oil or it's the natural oil that it's lost. I mean, you can actually put it back into the wood. Now, it's very slow drying. You have to let it sit. Sometimes, you know, after I rub it in real good, you don't let it sit on the wood for a long period of time. 
you know, or it'll get gummy on you. So when you put it on, you let it soak in really good. Maybe 15, 20 minutes is about what I do. And then I wipe it off really good with a rag. I scrub it and I wipe it off incredibly well. And then I let that dry. And then that, it's an inexpensive way to finish, I mean, a lot of things. Now you can also add boiled linseed oil into paints, oil-based paints. And yes, that works, okay? Um, I've done it before. It's not my favorite thing to do. If you just add a little bit, again, it may gives you more, it gives you more time, like when you're brushing and stuff, so you can get rid of brush marks. Uh, that's pretty much what I used it for. But it's fantastic, you know, to use on wood and stuff like that. So that's why I put it up here, but let's, let me take that down and let's keep going. Well, I'll talk about the mineral spirits. Mineral spirits, denatured alcohol, acetone. These are the three that I primarily use. And we'll jump around when we talk about them, but I'll pull down the linseed oil and the mineral spirits in a second. Mineral spirits, same thing, oil-based paints. It's good for cleanup. It's good. I use it a lot for cleaning my brushes. Um, I use it a lot of times for that. The other thing that I do is like on woodwork, when I'm done sanding it and I'm done doing everything I'm going to do with it, a lot of times I will wipe the wood down real well with mineral spirits and I'll let it dry because it gets the wood really clean before I put any kind of a finish on there. You're going to get people that disagree with using this in that way. It's the way that I do it. It works for me. Um, it doesn't raise the grain at that point. If you wanted to raise the grain, of course, you can wipe it down with water first, a light coat of water, let it dry. The grain raises, you do one more final sanding but I still always clean it off with mineral spirits. And I also use mineral spirits to clean a lot of my tools. Your tools get gummy, greasy, stuff like that. It works good. So it can be used that way too. So let me pull these down and I'll show you the three that I primarily use all of the time. One moment. Okay, upper left, let's talk about, you know, the acetone. Okay, I use acetone more than a lot of this stuff, when I'm, especially when I'm cleaning steel and I'm getting ready to put primer on it or anything like that. Um, it works great and I really like it. But again, I mean, you should use this in a well ventilated area and I like it because it's very fast drying. Now you can use it to clean up solvents, clean up resins, epoxies, fiberglass, all the stuff that it says, but it's like, well, how do I use it? And what do I use it for? Well, after I've gotten all my little nibs and stuff off of the steel or whatever I'm doing and it's, you know, fairly well sanded or however I want to do it, I wipe this down really well with acetone in a well-ventilated area, or I have a vapor mask if I'm not, because this stuff will make you sicker than hell too, just like a lot of them. So when I have it wiped down really well, and it's incredibly fast drying, you can almost start dealing with it right away, the steel. Then I go to my primer, I let the primer set, then I turn around, lightly sand the primer, and then I put my paint on it, depending on the project. But acetone is my go-to, it really is. Now denatured alcohol over here, is a close second to that. Now I use denatured alcohol. I was telling you a minute ago about woodwork and stuff. I've gotten away slowly from mineral spirits. I still use it for cleaning wood and stuff, you know, prior to any kind of like a stain finish or whatever I'm doing on projects. Denatured alcohol, I use a lot for that and it dries like instantly, like right now. So you can use it, but you just have to understand it's incredibly fast drying. Now lacquer thinner, what about lacquer thinner down here in the middle? Lacquer thinner, I use a lot for cleaning my brushes. I can thin lacquer with it when I buy solvent-based lacquer. And it, I can thin it down and give me more working time because sometimes lacquer is a little too thick for me. Or if I'm spraying it, I can thin it down a little bit before I spray it. What's really great and I really like about lacquer thinner is whenever I use my detail sprayer or I use any sprayer, I always use lacquer thinner to clean up all of my spray gun all the metal and everything and you know I throw them in like a little a little Tupperware bin and I clean up all the parts real well and it works really really good for that and those are the ways that um, I use this stuff let's jump to the questions real quick um, on a lacquer thinner using it um, to thin paints yeah it's like four ounces to a gallon is some standard I don't really use it for that um, I use it for lacquer and I add a little bit and I spray it and pretty soon you begin to get a feel for what you like and how you're putting it through your spray gun. So I don't think there's a magic formula. I mean, if you, like, you know, like somebody says brushing lacquer, well, all brushing lacquer is, is lacquer that's been thinned down. I mean, you can kind of get lacquer, thin it yourself and make your own brushing lacquer. Brushing lacquer, you still got to work fairly quickly with it. I mean, that's kind of a different, 
different topic. But I mean, yeah, I mean, you can do it that way, sure. Um, question relating to uh, boiled linseed oil. Um, if you want to cut it down a little bit, I would use denatured alcohol. Um, that would work really good for that. And I've done that before uh, on woodwork and stuff. So the answer is yeah, but use denatured alcohol. You'll find it works really the best. Um, another use for denatured alcohol I've used, is, yeah, I've used it. You can buy shellac flakes um, and make your own shellac. Um, I've done that before. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt. You can also go down and get Zinsser, uh, you know, it's amber colored or clear, you know, shellac, but it's, um, now the clear is not wax based. So that's kind of cool. You have to understand there's wax in it. So if you put anything over it, you could have a problem. Now they also have the de-wax shellac. Um, the amber shellac and those are waxed, but I mean, it doesn't matter anyway, back to the topic, which was the denatured alcohol. You can use the denatured alcohol to cut those products too. Um, and it works great for that. You know, you can thin them out. And if you say, well, one coat doesn't look that good, well, you can keep adding coats. But don't thin it out too much at first. You know, use your own judgment when you're doing this. But I believe the clear by Zinzir is not wax. And I believe everything else is has wax in it. So just be careful what you're putting on over it. Here's your lesson on shellac. You can put shellac under almost any finish you can think of. And you can put it over almost any finish you can think of. Um, I'm sure somebody can drop a comment and tell me about something that doesn't work, but that's my thoughts on it, and I've used it that way before, and I can pretty much get away with using shellac on a lot of things. Why well, use naphtha to thin things when you're spraying it? It decreases any of the stuff that you can add when into spraying. It decreases your runs, that's all, but don't overdo it or you're going to get more of them. Yeah, I understand what, you know, what you're saying about the ventilated area. I would use any of these products, let's just make a blanket statement, and use all of them in a well-ventilated area or get a good vapor mask. If you breathe any of this stuff for any length of time, you're going to get sicker than hell. You can get dizziness. You can get nausea. There's a whole list of like complications that you're going to begin to get. And, you know, if you use it correctly, they're wonderful products, okay? But like I said, just be safe. Yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying. Um, cleaning all of your tools and cleaning up grease and grime. Alcohol was one of my go-tos. It works great. Alcohol will clean it right up, take it off faster than heck. Lacquer thinner will work, yeah, but I find that denatured alcohol works better a lot of times. Acetone pretty much always works for me. But again, you want to be careful with this stuff because um, if even if you put on latex gloves, you'll notice very rapidly it starts to eat eat through and flake off you know the latex so you can imagine you don't want to use it just on your skin so keep your skin protected get a really thick pair of rubber gloves if you want to but i'm not using this stuff all of the time so latex gloves work for me i might have to change gloves once twice maybe three times but still i mean these are my three products that i use you know the bulk of the time in my metal work and in like you know spraying paints or brushing or anything like that Okay, we can recap real quick. What is my favorite one to use in cleaning up steel and getting grime and grease and stickers and all this crap off? Acetone. Acetone is my favorite. I think it works the best for me. It's worked better than uh, most of these other products. I don't like the MEK, like I said. So acetone is my go-to for that. For cleaning up brushes and stuff like that and cleaning up my spray gun, of course, lacquer thinner. And I use it to thin down lacquer because I do spray um, quite a bit of lacquer sometimes depending on woodworking. Or sometimes I can put it on by hand by thinning it down like I told you. You can make your own uh, brushing lacquer just by taking regular lacquer and thinning it down. And if you don't like that first coat, just keep applying coats because solvent uh, you know, based lacquer has a burn in, what they call burn in, and it burn one coat, it burns into the other and you can keep building them. So that's the way that I use them and it works real good that way and you can just decide yourself just by getting a little container I mean how much you know you just put a little bit of that lacquer thinner in there stir it up put it on see if you like how it spreads on or sprays and then you go from there so those are you know just boilerplate ways of doing things you got to play with it and see what works for you denatured alcohol I use it a lot on my final you know wipe down on wood after I've sanded the daylights out of it I know that it gets it incredibly clean. I know that I won't have any fish eyes bubbling, you know, or any imperfections like, you know, when I start my finish work. So those are the ways that I use the products. Um, I hope this helps you a little bit on an understanding of, hey, what should I go buy? There's confusion when I'm out there and I'm looking at all these different products. Try them. You get a small container. Maybe you like something else I haven't used. 
I'm the Home Handyman, and I'll see you guys on the next video, and I hope you click subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.